As a person and as a professional, do you believe, Mr. Umland, that the world will ever see Putin? I know he's indicted by the International Criminal Court, but did you believe he would ever be arrested? That's difficult to say. Um, what I could imagine is that um, if Ukraine wins this war, that the regime will change. And then Putin would uh, perhaps lose his power. And what then happens to him is difficult to foresee. Um, I would rather not uh, believe in it. I hope for it. But um, maybe that's also not the most important uh, part of it. The, the fact that he's already indicted now for uh, this horrendous crime of child deportation is, I think, by itself already a, a big step forward. Indeed. He's, he's going to Xi Jinping, to his friend with no limits or whatever that means. Hmm. What the world should expect, what Ukraine should expect? I think the crucial question is here whether China is going to support Uh, Russia economically and militarily in a significant way. If China decides to do so, and I'm not a, enough an expert on China to know uh, about this, then uh, Ukraine would indeed be in trouble. However, if these uh, meetings are all sort of sweet talk, as we as we know from China, Chinese leaders like yes, to do that. Exactly. They have always this, this very sweet and uh, li friendship without boundaries. <laughs> and now the, uh, the map of China was published and um, it was a disclosure what, what is meant without boundaries. Well, that was literally without boundaries. Yes, uh, the, without the, boundaries. It's been told to me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this yeah, is, this yeah. is the so, way. So if, if that all remains in, in the rhetorical sphere and the uh, support is symbolic and or marginal, then I think uh, it doesn't matter actually that much, um, whatever then C may say. But um, if we see here indeed um, a change of priorities in Beijing happening and then delivery of significant weaponry, right. that, that's going to be a, r a real problem. What about Orban? Okay, Xi Jinping, I can understand. Putin wants, if not fr uh, friendship without boundaries, that some, some, uh, some help. But Orban. Yeah, Orban is bizarre, um, especially against the background that Hungary has its own history with the Tsarist Empire and also with Soviet Russia. So hundreds of thousands of Hungarians have suffered from, from Russian imperialism. Just by the way. Yeah, and, but, uh, you know, Lajos Kossut or Imre Nagy, uh, the leaders of uh, the sort of independence movement in the 19th and 20th century, they're probably turning in their in their graves right now when this is all happening. Um, this is all very sad, actually. I still remember, I'm from East Germany, I remember the late 1980s uh, when, when Hungary was really the most forward-looking country, mm. when it was the most westernized country, and it was actually sort of breaking up the the old um, Iron Curtain right. and had a leading role, and now it's, it's suddenly fallen into this very strange role of uh, a supporter of Putin within mm. the EU and NATO. Do you think, when, you, when, you, when you're saying it, you mean the whole country, or whether we're talking about Orban? Yes, I'm, I guess it's mainly Orban and the people around him. I guess it's not the whole country, but unfortunately they rule the country and Orban yeah. has a grip on yeah. the countries and Indeed. he's using the weight of the country, the relative weight that the country has in in NATO and in the EU to, to make all sorts of trouble and now also making some trouble even for countries like Sweden uh, with the accession of Sweden to NATO. This is all bizarre. Mm -hmm. What's to expect? I don't know. I think the, there should be much more um, pressure here from all sides, from, from the US, from the EU, from NATO. To make, uh, to make Hungary behave. Otherwise, they, they, they should leave. I mean, but, but are they, why are they in these organizations if they actu uh, actively sabotaging its uh, both domestic affairs and, and foreign affairs?